and welcome to Kids Club at Home. I'm Auntie Cindy and with me I've got Auntie Pauline. <laughs> How's your week been Auntie Cindy? Well, it's been very, very busy mm. but I got to run around and do a couple of deliveries. Ah. And what about yours? Well, my week is behind me now. And now I'm here at Kids Club and I'm super excited to be here. But the highlight of my week was those deliveries and getting to spend time uh, with you guys. This was awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> and what made this week even better was getting to see some of you for me. And delivering those packs and seeing those happy faces. You know what I did? I took a photo of most of the people that I saw when I remembered, because my, my brain doesn't always work, so sometimes I forgot. <laughs> but can I show you the photos? Yes, but only if you include the guys I got to see as well. Deal. Let's check them out. Woohoo! to have seen everyone and have a quick chat with them some longer than other chats mm -hmm, for sure <laughs> it has just reminded me of how i miss seeing all of you every week but we are glad that despite lockdown we can take small opportunities to see everyone absolutely it's a light in the darkness <laughs> or a a light in the middle of the tunnel. Never mind at the end of the tunnel. <laughs> yep. Load shedding has no effect on how it brightens my week. For sure. Who needs a torch when you guys light up our week? You know, you know what we have to do when load shedding hits? Everybody no, needs what? to everybody needs to put their hands in the air. Because many hands make light work. <laughs> <laughs> that was terrible. Okay, enough with the puns. Mm, As you might have guessed, we are carrying on our theme of light. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be learning about various themes in the Bible. And last week, we started with the first one. Light. You know what is really cool is when you take a theme and you see it all over the Bible. Yeah, absolutely. So last week we heard about some verses in the Bible that teach us about light. We started in the first three verses of the Bible when we heard God say, let there be light. And it was the first thing created. Yeah. And you know what I find quite fun to do? What? That when you the light on you say let there be light and suddenly there is light Ta -da. Although, <laughs> although I can't make the light like God did but it reminds me that he just spoke 
and it happened. Mm, pretty amazing, hey? Awesome. But you know, we, we also learned that Jesus came into the world as the light of the world. He is the light. Yes, and the light always wins. Yes, when Jesus died and rose again, he beat the darkness. Woohoo! Absolutely. Well, tonight we are carrying on with the theme of light in the Bible. So let's cross over to Bianca for our whip around question. Hey guys, here are your whip around questions for today. Do you or don't you like load shedding? If you do, why do you? If you don't, why don't you? I mean, some people love the adventure of grabbing the torch and the gas lights and having a picnic in the dark. But for others, it is just an inconvenience. It's dark, you can't see what you are doing and trying to cook supper is impossible. For me, load shedding is an opportunity to sit back and spend time with family and God without our TVs to distract us. So, go on, hit pause and talk amongst yourselves. Do you or don't you like load shedding? I don't like load shedding. I'm ready to fight with ESCOM. Uh, just before you start a fight with ESCOM, how about we rather have a fun fact fight off? Who Ooh. has the best facts about light this week? I know I have the best fact about a sloth in South America. Bring it on. I've got some pretty fun facts too. Okay. So, <laughs> let me tell you about the pale-throated sloth who lives in the trees in the northern Amazon forest. And he swings through the branches of the trees in total darkness. Wow. He is a nocturnal creature. That just means that they're awake at night and sleep in the day. So, do you know how he does it? That he swings safely through the branches at night. How does he know in the dark that a branch will hold its weight or whether it will snap. Can you work it out, Auntie Cindy? Um, well, I know how bats fly in the dark and I've heard of certain birds being able to fly with sonar, but I don't think that a sloth has sonar. So how does a sloth do it? He smells. <laughs> It uses the sap in the trees. So if it can't smell sap in the tree, that means the tree is dead and the branch will break. Then it won't sure. go onto that branch. So it can smell in the dark if a tree is healthy and living or if a tree will be able oh. to take its weight or not. That's just amazing. Honestly, just amazing. Yep. I think. That is the sort of fact that has people coming to our kids' club to hear. What an amazing fact! But let me share my fact with you. Mm. Did you know we cannot see colors in the dark? What really? makes it possible to see colors is light that is made up of all different colors. <laughs> mm. Not dark enough in there. <laughs> <laughs> no. well, I heard that we only see a small fraction of light. 
that there are many different types of light, like ultraviolet light, infrared light, which we can't see, but there are some animals that can. And these different types of light have a way bigger range of colors than we can see. Yes, birds and lizards can see ultraviolet light and goldfish can see infrared light. Oh, wow. You know, I like colors and I'd love to be able to see all those different colors that are out there. Sure. So, my second fun fact for the evening. How many Christmas lights do you need on your house for it to be visible in space? Uh, that's not a real thing. No. Nah. Well, it? actually it is. Some people wow. at the university have worked it out. I mean, they've obviously got nothing else to do. Um, but they, they were inspired by a movie called Deck the Halls, where this guy, obviously a like, deranged dad or something, he wanted his house to have so many lights that it was visible from space. And so these students worked it out, and they discovered the movie wasn't that far off. Do you know they worked out that you need, wait for it, 2,683 LED lights and then your house wow. will probably be visible from the International Space Station. Wow, that is incredible. Are you going to do it this well, Christmas, Auntie Cindy? <laughs> maybe, maybe. Guys, you better watch for Auntie Cindy's house at Christmas time. <laughs> Well, my final fact for this week is actually in the booklet, in the home delivery packs, which we dropped off this week. Hmm. Did you know that lightning is 600 times brighter than the sun? Whoa. That's pretty bright. You know, I know you mustn't look at the sun directly because it'll damage your eyes. But lightning is so pretty and fascinating to watch from a distance, like over there. Yeah. I love a good lightning storm. Yep. Well, I have to say my favorite fun fact is the sloth that uses its nose to smell if a tree is living or dead. What's yours, Auntie Cindy? Definitely the sloth, because it reminds me of teenagers. They like to sleep all the time. And you switch a light on, and they're like... Ah! And you've got a few of them <laughs> at home, favorite. don't you? <laughs> Two. <laughs> well, we're about to hear in the Bible passage how Jesus says, you cannot hide the light. So let's listen mm -hmm. as Chelsea reads the Bible passage from Matthew chapter 5, verses 14 through to 16. This evening's Bible reading is taken from Matthew chapter 5, verse 14 to 16. Listen carefully for how we are light. You are the light that gives light to the world. A city that is built on a hill cannot be hidden and people don't hide a light under a bowl. They put the light on a lamp stand. The light shines for all the people in the house. In the same way you should be a light for other people. Live so that they will see the good things you do. Live so that they will praise your Father in heaven. Okay. Auntie Pauline, what are you doing? I am taking the biggest, darkest blanket and making a fort so that it is really, really dark. <laughs> is that what you have in your hand? Well, I have a light here, a torch. You see, 
oh, how do I switch this thing on? Ha ha. <laughs> <laughs> you see, the point is to experience darkness, you need to be in the darkness. So I'm going to climb into my fort that I, I'm busy making over here and, and carry on inside my fort. Give me a second, boys okay. and girls. Okay. We'll wait. I am now in the dark with a camera and I can't see anything. Can you see me? Maybe just like a little bit? Well, we learned in Genesis 1 that darkness and silence is what was there before God spoke. And we learned that in John 1, Jesus came into the world as the light. I am going to switch on my light in a moment, and we're going to see the difference it makes to the dark. Maybe it's something you can do as a family. Switch all the lights off, build a fort, make it really dark. Because it's really worth seeing the difference that light makes to the dark and that Jesus makes to our world. Are you ready? I'm going to switch on my light. One, two, three. Whoa! Look at the difference it makes. Now when Jesus stepped into the world, into our world, into the darkness, it changed everything I have here a candle this candle is like you and me this candle just like the light I just switched on cannot switch itself on you and I cannot light ourselves in order for our candle to light I have to light a match. I have to light it. Do you see? The candle can't switch itself on. Well, you and I cannot make ourselves light. We cannot switch ourselves on and off for Jesus. You see, being a child of God, it's not about being good, how good we are. It's not about going to church. It's about trusting in Jesus. Just like there is nothing the candle can do to light itself, so there is nothing we can do to be made right with God. It's all about trusting in what Jesus has already done when he died on the cross for our sins and then came alive three days later. When he did that, he beat the darkness once and for all. And because of that, when we trust in him, he will forgive our sins. But nowadays, people can't see Jesus. But what is left here is Jesus' light in us. Now, I lit my candle. If mom and dad are with you, and only if mom and dad are with you, light a candle in the dark room. See the difference the candle makes, the light makes. And Jesus says, you are the light of the world. Did you hear that when Chelsea read for us? She didn't read from the Bible and it didn't say, wait until you're a certain age. The Bible didn't say, wait until you're older. It didn't say, girls are better at this than boys are. It didn't say, you have to be a man or... You have to be black, or you have to be white, or you have to be from a certain country. It said, you are the light of the world. So everyone who is trusting in Jesus is the light of the world. 
we make a difference in the world, just like our candle makes a difference in the dark. Maybe you want to even say it out loud. If you are trusting in Jesus, say it. I am the light of the world. Go on, say it. It might sound ridiculous to say, but that is why Jesus goes on to say, you cannot hide the light. So here's my candle. Can I hide it? What happens if I put something over it? It's impossible. Even if I try to hide it, the light still shines through. Now we've just heard that we are the light. So the only question left to ask is, how are we going to be the light in our communities? What are you good at? How can you, yes you, serve others so that they can see that you are the light? Are you good at helping mom bake? And could you bake some cookies for someone who is stuck at home, who is not well, who is lonely? We're allowed to visit people now, so maybe you can take something to someone who's lonely. Bake them some brownies. Yum! Are you good at helping in the garden? Could you help an elderly neighbor and mow their lawn for them? Do you show your own family that you are the light? So when mom and dad ask you to help them pack the dishwasher, wash the dishes, do you complain? Or do you happily show them that you are living in the light and you help them happily with joy? What about when your friends are mean to someone at school? And they won't include somebody in your group of friends. How do you show them that you are living in the light and living for Jesus? Do you laugh with them at the other person? Or do you include the other person? Make them feel welcome, be kind to them. And show them and your friends that you are the light of the world, shining for Jesus. Here's a tough one. When your brother or sister starts getting on your nerves, and I know it happens all the time, how do you show them that you are living in the light? Do you shout at them and get angry? Or do you ask God to help you to be patient with them? How can you show them that you are the light? It's hard. So we're going to pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus came into the world and has made a difference to our lives. Please help us to be light to those around us and to shine your light for them to see. Please forgive us for when we don't shine your light but try to hide it. Please help us to be brave and not be afraid to shine your light. Help us to know where we can serve you. We pray this all in your wonderful and mighty name. Amen. What a privilege to be a light for Jesus. I know I'm going to try extra hard to live for him this week. But I am also glad that being a child of God is not about what I do, because oh, I always mess up. I am so thankful that Jesus has already died for my sins and that he will help me to shine for him. 
Absolutely. We're going to cross over to Luke now to help us understand what we have just heard. And he's got our curveball questions for us. Luke, over to you. Hey guys, are you ready to answer some questions about what Auntie Pauline has just taught us? Listen out for your question. Under fives, what do we need when it is dark? Five to sevens, how are we like Jesus? Eight to elevens, how has God gifted you? What are you good at? How can you use that to show the light of Jesus to others? Over elevens, what can we say to ourselves if we feel like hiding the light? Okay, a quick recap of those questions and then hit pause and have a go at answering your question. Under fives, what do we need when it is dark? Fives to sevens, how are we like Jesus? Eight to elevens, how has God gifted you? What are you good at? How can you use that to show the light of Jesus to others? Over elevens, what can we say to ourselves if we feel like hiding the light? Bye guys. It's hard to shine our light for Jesus all the time, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. So we're going to watch a short video from Chrisworks. The guy in this video doesn't understand the difference that light can make. Let's watch. <laughs> beep, beep. <laughs> You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. This is Chris. And this is Lisa. And they're going for a walk. In the dark. Oh dear, Chris has fallen over! Ooh, what has Chris found? Oh, it's a lamp! Now they'll have light! Excellent, Lisa knows just what to do! But I'm not so sure about Chris! Oh well, let's see what Lisa is up to! Let there be light! Oh dear, Chris doesn't know what the lamp is for. But Lisa does. Ooh. Chris doesn't seem to like that idea. But don't worry, Lisa will fix it. What is Chris doing? Poor Chris just doesn't understand. Ooh. I have a bad feeling about this! Ouch! Uh-oh! Lisa's not happy! It looks like the light is going to stay hidden. Well done, Lisa! Ooh, look at that light! <gasps> what now? Fantastic! Chris has finally got it! And now... Everybody can see, it's time for a party! You are the light of the world. A city on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, 
Let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and praise your Father in heaven. We're going to listen to a song now by Go Fish. It's called My God. It talks about how big and mighty God is. But listen for the part where it says, I want the world to know about my God. I want to live so the whole world can see that my heart is changed. I'm forgiven and new. If people need proof, may they see it in me. That's shining your light for Jesus. Let's listen. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big and so strong and so mighty. There's nothing my God on the floor laughing at them. Take a look. Where do cows go on a Friday night? They go to the movies. 
Do you know the one about the electric eel? It's a shocker. Why did the queen go to the dentist? Because he gave her a crown. Okay, Erin. What is... Okay, I'm going to be telling you a joke. Okay, what is this? What is this? Okay. Hold your two thumbs out. Alright. Okay. After I put this on you, you need to say wing three times. Alright? Okay, say it. Wing, wing. Wing, wing, wing. Hello? 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 Do you get it? Why did the fish blush? Because it saw the ocean's bottom. <laughs> Why well, was six afraid of seven? Because seven ate nine. Where do cows go on Saturday night? To the movies. Why did the queen go to the dentist? Because he gave her a crown. Hi, oh my goodness. Good job, guys. <laughs> what is this week's challenge? I wonder. Well, Tabitha, what have you got in store for us this week? Hey guys, I've got four dogs at home. But I want you to meet Ruby. Ruby is my little baby girl. And she likes to snuggle under the blankets. <laughs> this week, we have an easy challenge for you. We want to see a photo of you with your pets. How you take the photo is up to you. You can dress yourself and your pets in all the same colored clothes. You can do all sorts of crazy things. You can take just, or you can just take a photo of you with your pet. But... What if you don't have any pets? Then just send us a selfie of you and let us know what your dream pet would be. If you didn't have a ruby, I would want a guinea pig or a hedgehog. Or no, wait, I would want a giraffe. Get snapping, get your pets and take a photo and send it in. Why not do it straight off the kids club so you don't forget to do it? Oh, I almost forgot. The winner gets to tickle Chelsea's feet with a feather. Ha! I know Taylor's going to enter this week's Freaky Friday. One day she is going to be the crazy cat lady who has 20 cats. Well, I'm kind of hoping that Luke doesn't send in a photo because he's got a pet snake. Oh. <laughs> I wonder what all our boys and girls have. I wonder. Oh. You know, sadly, we've come to the end of another week of Kids Club at Home. <laughs> and it's time to say goodbye. But I think we need to finish by praying. Auntie Cindy, will you do the honors? Absolutely. Come on, let's pray. Father God, we thank you for all the fun that we can have at Kids Club at home. And we thank you for all that we have learned tonight about being your light in the world. Please help us in the week ahead to shine our lights for you. Please help us to not be afraid to shine them that other people may see you shining through us. We pray this all in your mighty and glorious name. Amen. Amen. 
Okay, go on. Turn off YouTube now and go take some photos of you and your pets. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> we will see you all next week. Keep shining for Jesus. Bye. 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 Bye.